why, number one, does Google need all this information? We can answer that in the fact that 85, 86% of your revenue comes from advertising, so we know you manipulate the data in some ways. However, can you explain what you do to minimize this data, which is generally an accepted standard practice among those who collect data? Over the course of the past few years, more and more privacy controversies have come under the public spotlight and more and more countries, states, and local municipalities have passed data privacy laws. Google and other tech companies could feel the changing consumer sentiment and changing regulatory environment. In response, Google announced they are ending their practice of selling user data and are developing, testing, and implementing a privacy sandbox model within their broad platform from Chrome to Android. Unlike Apple, who is building absolute privacy controls, and Facebook, who seems committed to absolute user data harvesting, Google is attempting to balance user privacy with their advertising model in order to continue to enable publishers and developers to offer digital products for free while giving users some peace of mind. The Privacy Sandbox will contain user data within the Google platform and offer advertisers a way to advertise against user profiles, while simultaneously restricting access to those user profiles and identifiers. The Privacy Sandbox will also combat covert third-party tracking. This is a phase project that is being implemented over the course of a few years. It is important to note that the Privacy Sandbox does not stop Google from collecting and analyzing user data. This is our objective technical analysis. While there is some criticism around changes like Chrome restricting ad blockers and monopolizing the advertising power with this privacy sandbox and the immense trust advertisers and users will have to put into Google, the balance between advertising and privacy will likely allow for Google products to be priced lower than their counterparts who offer absolute privacy features. Google breaks down the privacy sandbox into web and Android categories. Web seems to focus exclusively on the Google Chrome browser. Google has announced five goals of the Web Privacy Sandbox which include combating spam and fraud, continuing to offer relevant advertisements, continuing to offer advertisement performance tracking, hardening cross-site privacy controls, and limiting covert tracking that attempts to circumvent privacy controls. And they have announced three goals for Android, continuing to offer relevant advertisements, continuing to offer advertisement performance tracking, and limiting covert tracking that attempts to circumvent privacy controls. These goals are combined with restricting advertisers' access to user data. Here's how. Across both web and Android, Google is implementing this by overhauling their APIs by limiting the unique user, device, and browser data available from Android and Chrome. In addition to privacy, this will provide a way to combat fingerprinting that uses this data to create a unique identifier for users. Chrome and Android will keep much more of the processing on the device, including ad targeting, and retargeting instead of allowing data to be sent to the advertiser's infrastructure. Google Chrome has already been criticized for being a device resource hog, especially with RAM. This will likely get worse as a result of on-device processing. Google is deprecating the advertising ID and phasing out third-party cross-site tracker cookies. Now advertisers will be offered a way to advertise against user profiles and track advertisement performance by receiving a data set of hundreds or thousands of users' behavior. This is called differential anonymity. Each user's data will also be indistinguishable from one another. This is called K-anonymity. It is important to mention this will provide limited transparency to advertisers, so they will have to put more trust into Google. We provide more in-depth analysis of these privacy features in our Android Privacy Feature video, Chrome Manifest Version 3 video, and Chrome Privacy Features video. Some products that are notably missing for the Privacy Sandbox documentation are Google Fi Cellular Service and Chromebooks with Chrome OS, both of these products have similar potential third-party tracking issues. In the web section of its Privacy Sandbox documentation, Google seems to refer exclusively to the Chrome browser. Since users can install apps onto their Chromebooks, the covert third-party tracking issues at the Privacy Sandbox addresses with Android are also possible with Chrome OS, but the Chromebooks website makes no mention of it, nor does the Privacy Sandbox documentation mention Chrome OS. Since Chrome OS and the Chrome browser are both based on Chromium, and Chrome OS uses the Google Chrome web browser as its principal user interface, it's likely many of these privacy sandbox features apply, but there still may be privacy protection gaps. Google Fi is built on top of other third-party cellular service infrastructure and there are various regulations depending on jurisdiction, so the same privacy features will likely not be available. For example, regulators often require mobile location sharing for emergency services and other cellular providers' infrastructure can collect some metadata from device communications which is outside of Google's control. Those cellular service providers often sell that data. It's unclear how user data from Google Fi will be incorporated into the advertising under the privacy sandbox. 
From watching the evolving Android and Chrome privacy features that Google is proposing and or implementing, they seem to be taking an open source collaborative approach with the developer community. As with most security and privacy controls, it's a trade-off between security and functionality and or ease of use, specifically for the limitations that developers are subject to. Apps and extensions that integrate with Google products will have some functionality restricted.